Welcome to Make Life Beautiful. This is Krista Elliott and I'm at the Art Gallery of New South Wales and our guest today is Shona White who's the Head of Public Programs and we'll be talking about all the things that you can do in the gallery or the things that are on at the moment that you can come to and it's uh, the 20th of May today 2013 and as the, as the year progresses we'll be introducing more and more things that you can bring your family to come to. Not forgetting that the Wednesday night is open till 9 o'clock I believe and there's always great things to, to do on that uh, evening as well so we'll hear all about, all about that shortly from Shona White. Shona White, thank you so much for coming on to Make Life Beautiful on Radio Northern Beaches. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's lovely to be with you. Now, what drew you to the role of public programs? Uh, well, that's, uh, that's a big story, really, because I've, I've worked in both uh, curatorial and in public programs uh, throughout my career. But what I really enjoy is that engagement with, with audiences, the engagement with the public. And what we say in public programs is that what we do is curate that experience for audiences and that's what's um, really special. Whereas an object curator spends their time with objects, uh, we spend our time thinking about that conversation that we have with audiences about the artwork and the exhibitions and the collection. Wonderful. Now you've got some very special exhibitions on at the moment. Would you like to tell us about the most famous one that's on? <laughs> well, the most famous one, which is of course 92 years old, is the Archibald Prize. And it's a very exciting exhibition that comes around every year, of course. Uh, it's always run with the, the Win Prize and also the Sulman Prize. And I think the three of them really fill it out to be a very beautiful exhibition to look at because, of course, you've got the wonderful portraits from the Archibald Prize and then in the wind you've got beautiful landscapes which are always something extraordinary and the wind prize is about landscapes and also about sculptures as well so an interesting mix of media there and then uh, the Sulman Prize is, is about genre it's called genre po uh, painting but that basically means something that sort of tells a story from life in some way and they, they tend to be pretty inventive those paintings. So the three together are really strong but of course the drama is in the Archibald Prize. Everyone comes to the Archibald Prize. So Shona White from the Art Gallery of New South Wales is the Head of Public Programs and we're fortunate enough here in Make Life Beautiful to be in the Archibald Exhibition and Shona's going to speak to us about one of the runners-up whose name is Fiona Lowry. So Shona tell us about Fiona's work. Uh, this is a beautiful work by Fiona Lowry, who is, has, been, has been winning prizes for a while now. She has this distinctive style, which is quite ghostly in a way, and very, very beautiful. She has chosen as her subject Sean Gladwell, who's a contemporary Australian artist whose media is, um, is video, these really interesting videos, and he's now an internationally acclaimed He's this huge artist all around the world, so it's pretty rare that we get to see him back in this country. But um, as with, with the Archibald Prize, the sitter has to actually sit for the artist. They have to have had at least one sitting. And I think that brings it very close to us as an audience, to the visitor. It's really, it's really quite lovely because it's a little bit like just being one or two steps away from some extraordinary person such as Sean Gladwell. I mean, he obviously they discuss the portrait, and so uh, sometimes they're quite. It's quite a partnership that goes on for the portrait. Uh, especially interesting, I guess, when you've got two artists, and they would have discussed you know, how it might look and what it might be like, and so it's this sort of beautiful kind of collaboration, and also that sense that you're quite getting some special insight into this, you know, Australian artist who's now just so internationally famous. Fiona achieves this really quite distinctive um, effect that she has in her painting by using a, an airbrush technique and although it's airbrush you can see underneath that, that, that technique that she's using some very strong drawing as well and although she would have uh, done some, some studies from life for this portrait because that's what you need to do to be in the Archibald Prize uh, I suspect that she also studies photography because you can see that she, she borrows something from photography and paint and looks at that relationship between the two. And then there's that really interesting relationship where, of course, photography is sort of hands off. You're getting this image that comes through a lens. And then with airbrush technique, it's not the same as, as a paintbrush where you've got this sort of almost like the thumbprint 
on the canvas kind of style. This is, it's sort of almost slightly removed in some way and I think that this adds to that beautiful ghostly quality that she manages to capture, which as I say, I think is under, underlying uh, some, some very beautiful drawing. Now, this work uh, isn't the winner, but it was enormously popular, and that's one of the things about the Archibald Prize, is because everyone can have their own ideas about which ones is their favourite and which ones they think perhaps should have won. The People's Choice, uh, which has just been awarded now, uh, was quite different to, to the one that the, that the trustees, who are the judges of the prize, have awarded. And one of the lovely things is, is that everyone comes in and has this very, very personal relationship with each of these portraits. And so this one was, was a runner-up. It came second or was highly commended, but it didn't come first. But it is enormously uh, popular and people really enjoy this painting. But you too can come in and, and see which one you like this year and whether you think that the, that the trustees or the judges got it right this time. Well, as you know, last week we interviewed Matthew Lynn about his work, which is a portrait of Tara Moss. And we're going to ask Shona White about her impressions of portraiture and how the Archibald has changed. My personal preference for portraiture is something realistic, but you just when you come to the exhibition, you'll see that there's so many ways to interpret what is a portrait. So we'll hand over to Shona to tell us all about this painting. Thank you, Shona. One of the lovely surprises that you find often with the Archibald Prize is that the sitter's relationship to the painter is actually something that's quite special. Now you might think, oh, people just select some celebrity or something um, out of some cynical idea that, oh, well, that'll be popular, so I'll just paint that person and I'll do whatever I can to get that person to agree to it. And, but whereas, for example, with this instance here with Tara Moss, uh, Matthew uh, lives quite close by to Tara. I think they're next door neighbours or something. And so it's actually a very real relationship. It's a very real neighbourly relationship. And it was a, a very natural thing for him as a great you know, portrait painter to want to paint Tara, who is you know, such an interesting subject. So she fits the bill for the Archibald Prize because, because she's a writer, she's a novelist, and of course the Archibald Prize asks for a sitter who is, uh, one, of the, one of the conditions is that you are uh, someone of letters, and so as a writer she is someone of letters. But she's also very interesting because of her interest in various uh, human rights issues as well, and I think that that gives a, fantas a fantastic depth to her as a sitter. And it's something that I think Matthew has really walk worked on bringing out through this, uh, this characteristic realist style that he has. It's a, it's a very beautiful style, it's, uh, it's really very skilled and uh, he's developed it uh, over the years uh, to some great effect and I think in this case here it's a, it's a beautifully sympathetic portrait of Tara Moss, his, his friend and neighbour. So Shona, what, what I am seeing here though, although it's realistic, there, is, there are elements when you come close, and this is the reason to come to the gallery to see the portraits, is from a distance you'll see, well that's why, why take a photograph, why not just take a photograph, but when you come up close it isn't very realistic through here. And uh, what's your comment about the, why would you have, even through the arm it's not realistic, what are your comments on that about realism as opposed to uh, seeing the brush strokes? The brushstrokes of the artist are so important to, to a painting because it gives it that enormous um, evocative character that you don't get from a, from a magazine photograph, for example, which is always so perfect and smooth and there's every sort of detail is, is, is mapped out. This one is where you, your eye completes the picture and so it invites you to be involved. You are part of the painting because, in a sense, you are completing it. So your very presence here is a part of the painting and that's what makes it so beautifully special, I think. Fantastic. Well, let's go to the next painting. I can't wait. So, Shona, this is such an interesting painting. Of course you can see why it won. It's just unbelievable. When you, and again, the reason to come to the gallery so you can see for yourself the time that must have been spent into creating this painting dot by dot by dot, I'm assuming. It just wasn't splatter gun, it was no. point by point by point. 
She, uh, this is, Del Catherine Barton has, I mean, from what I understand from what she's, she's talked about, the way that she works, is she certainly has an idea of where she wants to go with it, but it is also like a living process. So she gets into a kind of a, a zone, in, and it's with that repetition of, of making something, which we'd all know to a point if you've ever made something, if, you know, like you've ever done any knitting or you've ever made something out of woodwork or something. There's something in the very process of making that puts you into a very particular headspace and she goes with that and and then the painting develops and grows a life of its own in a certain way but of course it's a portrait so she had an idea of where she was going with it and she again this is a lovely example of two artists collaborating in a sense because there was a conversation that they had about this portrait about the making of the portrait and she was asking him you know what sort of animal if he was an animal what sort of animal would he be and this is why you have this extraordinary wild cat, sort of, uh, I think it's a composite cat, it's sort of made out of a few different things, a little bit of an oscillant, a little bit of something else. But So Hugo Weaving would have said, I feel like this cat. Yeah, I feel like a wild cat. And he's known for someone with a, with a great interest in animals, and he, he's, uh, he supports the causes of, um, of protection of animals. And you can see he looks quite gentle from a distance, and as you get up, Closely, you can see that there's a real determination in those eyes, and there's a and absolutely there's like a fierce protection, and and so I think she's she's brought that out quite quite beautifully. And the face is very pale; it's white, and only just a few pieces of pink. There's a little bit of pink here and a little bit of blue there, but the eyes almost seem like there's a, could be even be a tear there. Yes, there's uh, they're very very strong eyes and very very emotive. Really. Why do you think white? Why did you think you made the face white? I think she, she likes the stark contrast and it's also, I mean, you can see the eyes in the cat as well. It, dist distinctive in her work is, is eyes. Eyes are obviously really potent vehicles for the symbolism that she's conveying and also she uses animals and she uses plants and then she uses this patterning, dot, dotted patterning effect uh, with, with all of her, her work, which is, again, quite characteristic. You can always pick Adele Catherine Barton. Yeah, truly incredible. Now I have one more question for you, Shona White, from the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Here we are at the Archibald. Now you were saying that this prize is 92 years old, and originally I believe it was for portraits of people who had some standing in the community for the sciences or other elements, but not necessarily actors. So what, why the shift, and why, why are self-portraits allowed? Well, it's, um, it's, it's politicians, it's true. It's art, sciences, politics and letters. So it is all of those. That, that's, that was in the will. So actors come under the arts umbrella arts. and self-portraits, arts. Yes, because the artist is, is arts. And so it's, what's happened over the years is that people have interpreted this differently. And of course, when Archibald would have written that um, in the 1900s, he died in 1919, so, you know, that's, that's how he's written it up. It's thought that he was inspired by a portrait by John Longstaff of, um, of Henry Lawson. And he really admired Henry Lawson, who worked on his paper, The Bulletin, because Archibald um, started The Bulletin magazine, J.F. Archibald. And uh, so this is what's thought to have inspired him for the Archibald Prize, but of course we've got no definite um, proof of that, but it's thought so. And so he just seemed to think that it was a good idea for Australians to celebrate um, Australians of note, and his way of describing Australians of note was the arts, sciences, politics and letters. But a lot of the early ones were sort of men in suits or men in military uniforms, or so they were kind of, it was a very stuffy interpretation of that. And uh, what's happened over the years is that people have taken a much more uh, creative approach to it. Fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to some more studies in the Art Gallery of New South Wales in future programs on Make Life Beautiful. Thank you, Shona White. My pleasure. My pleasure. Great to be with you. This is the Yirrabana Gallery. And uh, Yirrabana is a word from the local Gadigal language. This is the, uh, the uh, indigenous people who lived here. Um, before the gallery was uh, was even thought of. And so Yirrabana refers to uh, this way, uh, the term this way. And this section of, of the gallery, of the Yirrabana gallery, has permanent artworks. So these are actually part of the collection, but they, uh, so it just means that they, they change less often. These ones change 
uh, they'll change maybe once or twice a year, but not that often. Whereas the section which is just over here is a project space and that is a, is a section of the Urbana Gallery which changes more frequently as in you know, every sort of two, three months or so. So uh, it's sort of divided up in that way, so you always get to see something fresh and new, but you also get to come back and see your favourites as well every time you come in. Where we are now is a really beautiful room that, be, that has been dedicated to just one artist. The focus is the family, and of course Make Life Beautiful is about building your family and enriching your life. So I'm very much looking forward to Shona White from the Art Gallery of New South Wales talking about this very special exhibition on how you can make your life more beautiful. Come and be inspired by these amazing images. The works in this, in this room here, these, these beautiful photographs and, and this installation, are the work of Brenda Croft. She's been working for many years now exploring ideas of Indigenous identity. And with this work here, you've got faith, hope and charity, and it's in reference to the mission life that a lot of Aboriginal people grew up with and that if they didn't directly grow up in it themselves, then perhaps their parents and their grandparents had. And so they've heard all these stories about, about mission life for years and years. And so it's a really interesting way of thinking about and exploring uh, an Aboriginal past and thinking about uh, how people's lives have, have changed and developed and also that sense of strength of culture that has, that has carried through. And you can see this also in the beautiful photographs that Brenda has of uh, these extraordinary women and their children uh, from the community. Mm -hmm.